Hello and welcome to Little Drops of Wonderful. Me and my little co-host here, you can probably just see her ear. <laughs> She's decided that the moment I sit down to start filming a podcast, she wants to be on it. It's not my cat. This is next door's cat. I don't know who she thinks she is, but she definitely thinks she lives between our house and next door's house. She gets food next door and too much fuss and attention here. Anyway, hello, my name is Ali and this is my channel where I talk about all things knitting and crochet and crafty and cross stitch and drawing and sewing and all of the lovely crafty things that we all love and enjoy. And it is currently a very sunny April Thursday morning, very early, and this is going to be my March wrap up of everything that I got up to in the crafty side of life over the past few weeks. However, it's going to be a bit of a different uh, format than what I usually do. Well, no, it's not. I'm going to attempt to make it the same kind of format to what I usually do. However, I have got no notes whatsoever. The only thing I've got here are my notes for my last episode to try and guide me towards anything I might forget. And that is because over on my other channel, my vlogging channel, which is This Little Wonderful Life, where I regularly post just daily life videos and often do video series where I film a vlog every day throughout a month. I am currently doing vlogs every day in April or April vlogs. So I'm a little bit pressed for editing time and filming time and preparation time. So I thought I would just sit down. I gathered everything from around the house, all the project bags, my knitting and crochet basket and everything that I could think of. And it's all in a gigantic, horribly messy pile at my feet. And I'm just going to work through it and hopefully not forget anything. It could either be incredibly fun or a total disaster. Just having a slurp of my tea. You can find me, by the way, on Instagram and Ravelry at Starry Eyes Alley, at, which I will put on the screen because I realise I just said that super fast and probably... Probably a bit slurred. Oh, this cat is really distracting me. She's trying to get comfy. I put a cushion on my lap now. You are spoiled, cat. Uh, but I am on. I find I'm on Instagram less and less these days. Uh, I don't know. I just don't. There's so many adverts. Yeah, I find increasingly that my time is spent more on the actual making of things, on the actual living of life, and trying to get involved in real life stuff away from YouTube and Instagram and reading and so on and I think Instagram's just slowly losing its appeal slightly for me. I do still pop on there and share things occasionally in my stories and uh, check things but anyway enough of that. That was a bit of a grumble wasn't it? <laughs> so I am going to get started with, okay let's refer to my last night. So what do I normally do? Welcome and where to find me, I've done that. Uh, oh yes, a little bit of a wrap up of the last month. So March was a big month. It started off with East Anglia Yarn Festival. I've got a vlog about this on uh, just, I think it's the last video on this channel. If you just go back to my videos, you'll see it there. I think I'm still buzzing from that. It was fantastic. It was a huge yarn festival in Norfolk. Dan and I, my husband, went for the whole weekend. He's not a yarny person, but he's a people person. So he loved it for all the chat and the socialization and so on. So did I, but I also loved the yarn. And then I got a horrible virusy cold thing at some point, which really floored me. And it was Dan's birthday, so there was a lot going on around that. And then our eldest daughter, Lilia, turned 18. I think when I started this channel, she was eight, nine, ten around that age and now she has just turned 18 she's a fully fledged adult she can order a drink in the pub she can vote she turned 18 on easter sunday so we had a big family easter birthday weekend it was brilliant she's got her party this weekend so it's been a really full-on month and i have picked up making but i've actually been doing quite a lot of just doodling and drawing because it, it just lets me i spoke about this in my last making vlog it lets me just get stuff creative out and do something with my hands but it can just be nonsensical and it's just making for making sake and it's a little bit like the arty crafty making equivalent of watching a really trashy television show 
that's a terrible analogy, but that's what it is. It's like mindless, brilliant, and you always, <laughs> you always feel pretty good afterwards. I'm gonna have to put this down because it's making me hot. It's probably the cat making me hot as well. Uh, yeah, so that was March, but I did manage to get something finished. I do have a, I, actually I've got two things. Yes, I do. I've got one little thing, it's a bit of a cheat, but we're going to call it a finished object. But the first thing I finished was my drippity drop socks. I'm so pleased that I finished these. I made uh, this pattern many moons ago and they are still my favourite socks to wear. The drippity drop, the drippity drop socks is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Uh, and the yarn that I've used is Ballroom Bliss by Green Lumpkin Yarn. It was one of the Strictly colorways for 2023. <gasps> Hasn't that knit up so beautifully? I love this color so much. I'm not really a pinky person, but th this pink, you have to excuse the light in here, it's still very early. What time is it? It's quarter past nine, British summer time. So, you know, few days ago this would have been quarter past eight in the morning so we've still got that kind of very early morning light there's the the pattern it's such a lovely texture it's so easy to memorize and get into it's a four row repeat and they just whiz by I knit these on DPNs which is my preferred method of knitting socks I knit them on 2.25 millimeter um, because that suits my tension although I get asked a lot about that um, if you're new to knitting, I would say uh, start with whatever, start around 2.25, 2.5 and see how you are with tension. If they're too big, they can always be house socks or welly boot socks. And if they're too small, you can always give them to someone else. So just do it until you work out your best tension. I always knit 2.25 millimetre, 56 stitches because I'm quite a loose knitter. Um, and sometimes I will knit my socks on two millimetre needles as well. Again, because I am a loose knitter, that wouldn't work if you were a particularly tight knitter. Well, it would, I suppose, but you'd have to increase your stitch count, wouldn't you? To um, Usually socks are knit on a uh, stitch count divisible by four, so 56. Or is it divisible by eight? It might be eight, actually. 56, 64 or 72, isn't it? So, yeah. Anyway, one by one twisted rib, no, two by two twisted rib, which I think is what's on the pattern. Um, slip stitch heel, square heel turn, gusset and Kay Jane's umbrella toe, which I accidentally, I thought I was being clever and had it like memorized, but it turns out that I'd memorized it in my head incorrectly. So it's a modified umbrella toe but not on purpose I added a few more rows than were necessary but actually that worked out really well for me and what I love about the umbrella toe is that you it decreases in a really nice round way but you finish off by kitchenering so it's really secure uh, and you only have to kitchen uh, about four stitches so I love them and I'm so pleased these are done they're going to be for me they're going into my sock drawer they've been blocked they're ready to go and I think that's all there is to say about them, other than they were living in my lovely bag that I got as a gift from James at the East Anglia Yarn Festival. I cannot get enough of this fabric. And now I'm sad because there isn't a project in here. Oh, hang on, have I put something in here? Oh, there's the leftover yarn, that's what I should say. I've got 54 grams left of the yarn having made these. Now I do knit my socks quite short in the leg, but I've got enough to make an entire other pair of socks so that's what I'm going to do I'm gonna go and pick a pattern recommend me a pattern in the comments for a nice speckly yarn with a heel flap and gasset and top down preferably because um, I'm gonna knit this up for another pair of socks and that way I can keep using my bag as well not that there are any, any rules about <laughs> when I'm um, when not I can use my bags but in my head I make my own rules so that's my first finished object and then I also uh, dived in to one of the kits I bought at the East Anglia Yarn Festival so and I might need some advice on this actually I bought the three is the magic number macrame bracelet kit for make and fable now there, there was all different kinds of kits and I wanted particularly to make the bracelet and there's three types, there's instructions for these three types of bracelets and you get the bead and you get the cord and you get the instructions. You get the beads, 
plural, and the instructions. And it says you will also need scissors, masking tape, or super glue or clear nail varnish. Oh, she's trying to scratch her nose on the edge of this. Uh, so you get that's the instruction booklet and everything. And I, of course, there was lots of different colours to choose from, but I, of course, went for yellow. And I made my first macrame bracelet. Now, I was a bit cack-handed with this, but I did manage to do it, and I'm very pleased with it. And I'm especially pleased that I made the little sliding catch that you do with these half of my hat. Hang on, let me get this on. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? Oh, you don't want to just see my hand. Isn't that cool? Oh, it would be cool if I could shake those, twist it round. There we go. Isn't that so cool? I'm so pleased with that and I'd love to make some more. I know I've got to trim the ends a little bit, but I'm so pleased with it. But possibly a rookie error. Where you secure the knots, the instructions say to use a bit of clear nail varnish or super glue to um, just secure it, to stop it coming undone. So I used a dab of super glue. But it's made the ends really, really... Let me see if I can show you this bit. It's not... It's going to be too tiny. Do you see this bit sticking up here? There. Um, that's a bit that's got glue on it and it's really sharp and hard. Now, I don't know if using clear nail varnish would have made that less sharp and hard, but if you are a bracelet or jewellery maker and you use some kind of... Um, adhesive to secure the the knots and the ends what do you use to avoid that because that is going to scratch against my arm and make it feel really really uncomfortable and, and I'm really disappointed in that bit of it because I don't think I will wear this because of it so if you do do that and you use something or there's a trick that I'm not aware of because I've never done this before please do let me know in the comments if there's a different type of adhesive um, I did a bit of googling and it came up with a few things but I didn't really feel like I was understanding fully I just say I'm so hot so hot in this jumper I'm wearing my ranunculus by the way because I thought it was a nice springy colour uh, but I am absolutely boiling it's only 11 degrees but I think it's gulping down that cup of tea so that's my other finished object but do let me know if you can offer me any assistance because I would like to make the rest of them or an, and another one of those, but I want to do it and be able to wear it without it feeling scratchy. So those are the things I made during the month of March. What are the things I progressed in the month of March? Let's have a look. Oh, I know. I progressed my weekender blanket. I am making the weekender blanket Oh, in my lovely bag. By Lizzie of this Lizzie sews. It's got chickens on it. <laughs> uh, and in here I have got my yarns and hexagons for the weekender blanket, which is a pattern by Sandra Paul of the Cherry Heart Podcast. Lovely Sandra. And I am making the weekender blanket over the course of this year with minis from the Green Lampkin Yarn Treasure Box secret treasure box blanket club i will leave a link to that in the description box underneath this is my lovely friend suzanne but i loved her yarn before we were friends she's going to be vending at in june she's going to have a store at what is the name it looks like such a good show i wish i could go all oh, that rhymed i think it's the wall monty yeah at the Wall Monty, which I think, where is it? It's on the 8th and 9th of June, and it's at Magna in Templeborough, which I think is near Sheffield, I think. My geography is terrible. Anyway, I thought I'd just mention that. I would love to go, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get up that far north for a weekend. Anyway, all that to say, she's doing a blanket club this year and it's a, a DK mini scheme. You get four every month and the theme is a secret treasure box. So they're all sort of jewel, a sort of explosion of different colours and so on. Our new neighbours have moved in opposite and they haven't got any blinds or anything yet. And I can see the 
the young girl is up up in her bedroom rocking the baby and she can probably see right into my living room and she's probably thinking, why is my neighbour sat on her sofa <laughs> talking to a camera and waving yarn about? It's hard to explain to people on the outside. So I've done my January ones and I've done my February ones and yesterday I received my March ones. So I think it's safe to show you my January and February ones, as long as I can remember. So this was the January ones. Here's all my squares. So the Weekender blanket, they're not squares, they're hexagons. The Weekender blanket is made up of lots and lots of hexes and you can make them with uh, join as you go method is included in the pattern. But I didn't want to do the join as you go method because I didn't want the gaps that that creates. So I'm gonna make them all. And then at the end of the year, I'm going to attach them all together with single crochet. This is the February one. This is a really bad way to show you, I know. This is my favourite one so far. I just love that peachy, neony pink. That is my absolute favourite one so far. Love it. And then yesterday, I got the March ones. So I'm going to say now to look away if you have not received your March ones or you haven't opened them yet. So I'm going to keep talking, but I'm not going to say anything to describe the colours. Uh, and I will tell you when you can look back. So look away now. And for everyone still with us. <laughs> for everyone at home and in our studio audience. Here's whose house it is. <laughs> Do you remember that? Through the keyhole. These are the colours for March and oh my goodness, every month I say these are my favourite, but I think these are my favourite. I love them. I'm not going to say anything to describe them. Don't want to give it away. Okay, you can look back now. So I think since I last spoke to you, I, I did all of the hexagons for February, so I did all of those. And there is nothing I'm enjoying more each month now than finding an evening, settling down with a bit of YouTube, getting into bed, grabbing my crochet hook and just spending some time just making these. I'm not really someone that usually enjoys making something that is lots and lots of motifs. I, I find it a bit tedious, but because I'm making them with four different colours and I get about five or six out of each um, mini scheme and it's only once a month, it's really enjoyable. I, I'm finding it such a good way to do it. So I'm really enjoying that project. I'm so glad that my March ones have arrived so that I can work on those. So that's something I progressed in the month of March and I intend to progress further in the month of April. Uh, what else? Oh yes, I have been working a lot on Lilia's university blanket. I, I did have lofty hopes at one point of getting this finished in time for her birthday but I think we all knew that wouldn't happen <laughs> but I put a little stitch marker in it from the last time I spoke to you so I can show you the progress I have made got my little gummy bear where is it there it is so you can see that since I last spoke to you I have done two four six eight ten rows it's quite it's a wide blanket so ten rows is a good amount of effort and this is the sun gold blanket pattern. It's the latest pattern from Lucy at Attic24. It's a completely free pattern. It's on her blog. I will link it underneath. And the colours have all been chosen by my daughter Lilia. She wanted really earthy, dark tones. And these are colours I would never have chosen in a million years, but I love them. I love them. I think she's done really well. And there are one, 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 one two, three, four, five different colours. They're all Starcraft Special DK. This is going to go away. I've got a raggedy bit on my nose. Uh, this is going to go away to university with her. It's going to get abused. It's not going to get properly looked after. It needs to be something that's going to take some machine washing and a little bit of rough treatment. So that's why I went for a good workhorse acrylic. Didn't I, Mia? She's looking at me like, I'm trying to sleep. Why are you talking? I was here first. So that's the Sun Gold blanket. I am making that. So Starcraft Special DK is a DK weight yarn. And I am using a 3.75 millimetre hook for that. 
I don't think I mentioned that last time and I got a few questions about it. And it's just a, one of the Clover Soft Touch, is that what they're called? And it's, I don't normally like these because I find the handle's too short, but actually this one's okay for that particular project for some reason. So yeah, I made some progress on that and I really want to make some more progress on that um, this month as well. I then, after I finished my Drippity Drop socks, I picked up uh, the next pair of socks that I had on the go. So I've got a few socks on the go that I cast on in one big cast on for the Strictly Sock Along in 2023. I picked lots of yarn and bags and patterns and I cast them all on so they were all started. And I really enjoyed doing that and it's really good to then finish a pair of socks and know that you've got a pair already begun that you can just pick up and go with. Obviously I had to go back to the pattern. So this lovely bag is by Dawn's Days who has got the... So Dawn's Days is her blogging channel and she is the Woven Almanac, is her crafting channel. How beautiful is that? Oh, I love this bag so much. And in here, I have got some yarn that by dyers that no longer dye, Little French Meadow. And the colour is Flamenco. I've had this for ages. I've hoarded it for ages and I'm so glad to be using it. So it was a sock set with this wonderful sort of Christmassy, icy, speckled blue. And then you had a contrasting colour of this dark royal blue as well. And with this I'm making the Ada socks by Caroline Corley uh, because I wanted to use the contrasting colour in a slightly different way. Rather like the Swiss Dot Shorty socks by uh, Knit Zip Happy, Nancy over at Knit Zip Happy, um, that pattern as well uses a contrasting mini in a different way than just using it for um, heels, toes and cuffs. And I like that. And the Ada socks do something similar. So rather than just using that contrast mini in the usual way, it integrates it into the pattern and throughout the sock. I'll put a picture up of from the pattern to show you what I'm on about. So this is my first sock. I've definitely done the cuff too long. I did it about three rounds more than the pattern called for. I don't know why. I just did, which is silly because I normally make my socks quite short. And this is going to make it even longer, but I wanted to make it exactly as per the pattern. Oh, it just, it's just knitting up so beautifully. I wish they still dyed. So this is a lovely textured pattern. And then you've got this stripe and then this stripe. And then there's going to be another dark blue stripe next and then into the heel. And I'm really, really enjoying the play on the colours and the texture and the interest that comes from those things, you know, interwoven with each other. Again, I am knitting them on 2.25 millimeter DPNs and on 56 stitches. And I'm gonna knit it exactly as per the pattern, although, oh, sorry, Mia. <sighs> Just dropped a DPN on her head. Uh, although I don't know what the toe is in the pattern, but I will always switch out the toe for Kay Jones' umbrella toe because it's my absolute favorite. So I've made a lot of progress on that and I've loved it. Uh, the second sock I've only done the, uh, the ribbing, the cuff so far. So once I've got this to the stage of about to do the heel flat, I will put this away and I will go back to the first sock and get it to the same stage and then so on because I like to knit my socks concurrently a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. So that's my current sock project. So that is going on the sofa over there for later. So now we're entering a, the complete unknown part of the podcast. Oh, I'm just going to look about me and see what there is and talk about it. So in this gorgeous bag. So lovely. Oh, posties outside. Not for me though is a project that I have kind of, it's kind of been languishing now. It's an advent project. This was my advent yarn from Green Lumpkin Yarn uh, that I had for 2023. It's gorgeous. The theme was Christmas around the world. And I am making by 
Dana Ray makes, or Dana Ray makes, Dana Ray makes, the, oh, what's it called? The mini stripes wrap. And I think my issue with this, why I'm not picking it up, is a, it's really long. So you knit it end to end, and it's a big, big old, it's going to be a big wrap, nice and wide. And I had to work out how I was going to do that with my advent yarns. And I made the decision to do two rows uh, of each colour. And then when I've run out of my 24 colours, I'm going to start again and do another two rows of each colour. And the pattern repeat, I haven't quite got down in my head yet. So I have to refer to it every time I pick it up. And also the rows are quite long. So I need to know I've got enough time to finish um, each row each time I pick it up. But it's, oh, look how well it's looking so far. Let's see if I can get it. It just looks so lovely. And I think it's going to be gorgeous when I've like got through all 24 colours. So I really need to pull my finger out with this and get on with it. So it is languishing. I've also been putting all the little stitch markers on it. When Suzanne does stitch markers, I think... Oh, I just love the kind of stitch markers she does. They're so pretty. So I've been putting any stitch markers that came with the advent, as I, they're attached to the yarn at the moment because the advent's still all in its little bags. I'm uh, attaching as I go. Actually, I need to get my little project, bag, um, project book that's over there that contains all the information, but I can't move, I'm incapacitated. That's a word that one of the, the podcast viewers shared with me. If you're incapacitated because you've got a cat in your lap, you don't have to get your own tea or coffee or anything like that. People have to bring things to you. That reminds me, I made Dan a cup of tea about 20 minutes ago and I left it on the kitchen table and I forgot to tell him. That's probably gone cold. I'll have to do that again. Yeah, so that's my mini stripes wrap, which I need to get back to using my advent yarns. Oh, and I, I should say as well, I am making that. So it's all fingering weight yarn, my advent. And the hook that I'm using, I've got to be better at saying this because it's I get asked a lot about hook sizes and things, is three millimetre. Half past nine. I've got an hour before I need to get Phoebe up. My, so it's the Easter holidays. Both my girls are upstairs asleep. But uh, Lilia, my oldest, will sleep until she needs to because she doesn't get a lot of time off, bless her. She's very busy, um, a very busy acting student. And Phoebe wants to be up by half past ten at the latest because she's meeting friends. That might be her and that might be Dad. I don't know. Now we're going to dive into my basket and discuss what's in it. <laughs> So first of all, we've got a bunch of yarn in here that I showed a couple of episodes back. Mother, um, cover your ears. I'll do what I did last time and I will put a uh, number that you need, to, a, a timestamp in the description below. So you have to go into the description box and click on the timestamp. If you're watching on your television, you need to fast forward until I'm not holding this yarn up anymore, okay? but you can't listen to what I'm about to say, so start fast forwarding now. This is yarn I put together and chosen to make my mum a, a granny wrap, granny triangle wrap. I have made a few of these now and I talk about it all the time. You would think that I would know the name of it off by heart, but apparently not. So it, these are all gorgeous yarns. Oh, goodness me. This is all made harder by having a cat in my lap. So I have got uh, a single batch one from the wool bun, which is gorgeous. A green lampkin yarn in the colour blackberries. I have got Mrs S Creations uh, from her tea party collection, Mad as a Hatter. Oh good, are you moving? She's fed up with me. Another green lampkin yarns, Twinkle Toes, one of her Christmas ones. Whoopsie, where are you off to? She's going to go, I've got a bag of yarn down there for my um, sun gold blanket and she likes to sleep on it. And Castleview yarns, a best day ever. And these are all yarns to uh, make a granny triangle wrap. 
I will have one behind here by Anna Boo's House. It's a free pattern by Anna Boo's House. It's not written for fingering weight yarn, but I've made a few of these. No, that's not true. I've made two of these now for fingering weight yarn and it works brilliantly. This is my homespun house advent from 2023. Oh my goodness. One of my favourite projects of all time. I love this pattern. I will make them forever more. I love making it. I love how it looks. And look at how gorgeous this yarn is. Oh my word. Best project for Advent Yarns in my opinion. That is a crochet project. I'm going to make one of these for my mum for Christmas with these yarns. So what I need to do is get these skeined up. Uh, skeined up? No. Um, caked up ready to go and then find some kind of container for them. That's what I need to do. I'm gonna make that a goal for April. Then I've got my gorgeous wool shed um, yarn here. This is the color Spirit. This was given to me by lovely Julie when I met her in Preston. I spoke about it a couple of episodes ago and I asked for ideas for kind of a Preston themed uh, a Preston based designer or themed pattern. I had loads of brilliant ideas. I've got a few things that I think I want to make with this. Yeah, but for now, I'm, to be honest, I'm just enjoying it in the scheme because it's just, it's just so pretty. But that is gonna be a project for this year. Then I've got some yarns. Uh, this is where my blanket lives for Lilia. So this is just yarns that I've got on the go for that. I'll just move that out of the way. Then, oh my goodness. My Christmas jumper that was supposed to be complete, that I started in January 2023 and it's now March, no it's not, it's April 2024 and I haven't even done frogging the first attempt. So first of all, let's just all appreciate how gorgeous this Alice in Wonderland bag is. It's by Lemon Tree Corner. I love it so much. It's got a bag charm from Green Lumpkin Yarns. It has got a, what is it, a friend to fungi? I was going to say fungi fancier, same thing, by um, Katie at Green Bean. And I've got a little notebook in here for my notes. And what happened with this, if you go back on my channel, you will see that I've got a few videos called Project Christmas Jumper. I had a total disaster. I used, uh, I messed up the first go and then I was doing really well with my second go before I realised I was using the wrong yarn. I was using a different brand of yarn to the one that I was supposed to be using. So I'm now in the midst of frogging that attempt. But frogging colour work, no joke. It's pretty hard because you're forever unfrogging, un, no, not unfrogging, you're forever frogging two yarns at the same time and you have to keep them untangled as you go. This is probably something to do in front of the telly, isn't it? Maybe I'll throw this onto the sofa and just challenge myself to at least get this frogged this month so that I can start it properly. Maybe one day I will finish this Christmas jumper. Right now I am a Christmas jumper failure. But the bag is gorgeous, so the longer it takes me, the more time I have to just look at the bag. <laughs> onto the sofa with you. Okay, now further down here, we have uh, the other projects that I cast on, the other sock projects that I cast on for my strictly socks and other things, I think, by the looks of it. What have I got here? So, oh, I can't even remember what I'm making with that yarn, so I think we're just going to, we're going to ignore that one and not talk about it, pretend that's not happening. Oh, yes, yeah, so this, this is a, I forgot about this, this isn't strictly socks, this is just some scrappy socks. Uh, this is a mishmash of yarn. Uh, of uh, left over from other projects uh, and other socks and I decided to make some sort of Frankenstein socks with them so and I obviously started this a while ago and haven't picked them up in ages this is as far as I've got just started one sock with one colour and then I moved on to a self-striping yarn here uh, yeah so I can't really tell you what the yarn is but I can tell you there's a gigantic yarn bath in this bag that I'm going to have to deal with. So yeah, these are going to be some Frankenstein scrappy socks. Which I need to pick up because I think these are going to be fun to make. But not right now. 
this isn't going to be a project for this month. I will say though that my DPN holder, I get asked about DPN holders when I mention them, so I'll just demonstrate it, shall I? This is by Joe at Pickle Lily. It's got frogs on it. I used to collect frogs when I was little. <laughs> and what a DPN holder is, is when you knit on DPNs, you use, uh, I, I knit, uh, I have my socks on three needles and knit with one. Uh, that's how I've always done it. I find it a lot more stable and it makes a lot more sense in my head for how I divide the stitches. I always have the front stitches uh, on one needle and then the back stitches on divided over two needles. So you'll always have your three needles or your, if you knit on four, four, and then you'll have your additional needle. And when you're not knitting, if you threw that in your project bag, you're in danger of losing needles and also the yarn slipping off the end. So a DPN holder is a little pouch with two poppers. Oh look, there's Joe's label there. And you pop it in and <clears throat> you do the popper up on either side of the work, like that. So it can't slide off the needles. And that's how a DPN holder works. I get asked about DPN holders a lot, so hopefully that's helpful for those of you that don't use them yet. I have many. It's another, it's another joyous rabbit hole to go down, these pretty DPN holders. Okay, this is definitely a Strictly Socks uh, project because it's in my gorgeous um, Charleston, couldn't remember the dance then, Charleston bag. Gorgeous little bag charm there. And this is by Sarah Jo Makes. She did this a few years ago um, when she, the Strictly Sock Along was on. And in here, I love that this has got handles as well like that. Oh, just love it. I have got some Sherry Iris yarn. Ooh. This is called Strictly Ballroom, I think. Gorgeous. I've had I've been hoarding this for years and I decided last year that it was time to to let it shine in a pair of socks. I have caked that up really badly. Oh, it will do the job. And I am making the chicken scratch socks by Lauren Colby. I'll put a picture up somewhere of what they look like because this isn't going to give you any kind of clue because this is how much I've done. However, it will show you how beautifully that yarn is knitting up. Oh, it's gorgeous. So after I finish my Ada socks that I showed you earlier, I will probably move on to these ones. So that is the chicken scratch socks. What else have we got in here? Oh my goodness, I forgot about this. Oh. I started, do you remember a few episodes ago, I decided to make my first virus shawl because I decided that I couldn't be a proper crocheter if I never made a virus shawl. So this is my virus shawl. I, it's not something, so people love this pattern because it's eas apparently easily memorable, um, memorizable and you can make it as big or as small as you like, but I am not finding it easy to memorize at all. Uh, also, I've had other projects that have just taken over, but it's not something I was able to sort of fall into and go, oh yes, I know what I'm doing here and just relax into it. I had to constantly keep checking the pattern and in the end I wrote down the pattern repeat because every time I picked it up I couldn't remember. That said, I've only done that much. But isn't it looking lovely? I, I have to say it is looking absolutely lovely and I'm making this with, it's a Shipyard's Whirl. It's a lovely gift from Leslie, who's another Kentish person like me in the county of Kent. Uh, in Black Forest Singer, look at this, it's um, a lace weight cotton, is it cotton? Oh, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, and you get, it's a thousand metres in here, and it, this is the colour change, I'm working from the outside in, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to work from the inside out, but I got confused. <laughs> it's going to be amazing, so I'm just on this dark purpley grey one at the moment but oh looking at it it kind of makes me want to do a few more rounds on it and I'm using a so that's lace weight and I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook for that 
And it's living in another This Lizzie Sews bag, which I've had for a while. And it's another bag with chickens on it. Oh, look at it. It's just so springy, isn't it? What a lovely spring spring bag. I need to get my nails done. Can you see I've got one missing? <laughs> Whoop! Attacked. This all feels very strange without having any notes. It's not sunny anymore either. It's raining now. We've moved, we've moved to a whole new weather pattern. <laughs> knows how long I've been talking a long time the dodgy bag mail so as I speak today is the 4th of April so we are four days into the dodgy bag mail swap partners have been done and sent out by Claudia I've got mine and I've had an email from her hello I am uh, I think Nancy Nancy I'm gonna email you back today I'm very very excited so the Dodgy Bag Mail, in case you don't know, is a yearly make-along that I run along with lovely Claudia over at the Crochet Luna podcast. And it's called the Dodgy Bag Mail because when I first started sewing little project bags for myself, let me get one of my Dodgy Bags. Uh, this is one I hadn't shown. This is one of the very first Dodgy Bags I made, actually. It's tiny. Uh, and it's got the Empire State Building on it. Or is it the Chrysler building? I think I've had this conversation before. Tell me, tell me Americans, what building is this? Uh, and I made this, it's a tiny little sock uh, bag and I love it. It's like the perfect size for socks. Uh, and I call them dodgy because I've no idea what I'm doing really. I've got a few uh, dodgy bag sewing tutorials on this channel, which I will link underneath in the description. You can also search my channel videos for them. And I just love making bags and not worrying about it. I don't worry about perfection. I don't worry about getting it particularly right. If it's functional and I like it, or it's good enough to give to a friend, it's good enough for me. We let go of our um, limitations and our uh, quest for perfection and we just get stuck in and have a go at sewing bags. And we do that from the beginning of April until the end of May, I think. What are the dates for it? The 5th of June. 1st of April to the 5th of June and there is a Ravelry thread which I will link underneath. You can go and chat about the bags and post your finished things. It's one big thread for all of that. I've also got another chatter thread in my Ravelry group where people just chat all year long about bag making and it's a really friendly and active place as well. And the other way you can enter is by posting your images on Instagram and using the hashtag, which is dodgybagmail24. At the end of the mail, I will draw a winner from the Ravelry group and uh, Claudia will draw a winner from the Instagram hashtag. I have got some new pins coming. I am very excited about this. They're actual enamel pins. There's been a bit of a delay because I was being extra fussy about the design and the finish of them, but I think we've got it now. I'm hoping at some way during this mail, they will be available to order from my shop. As soon as they are, I will do an extra little video to let you know that they are ready. They're something you can put on your bag that you've made to advertise in a classy way that uh, it is a dodgy bag, so people know, because people should know. <laughs> and that's the dodgy bag now. Uh, we organized, like I say, a swap as part of this, but that is now closed. Uh, the closing date was back in March. So if you didn't get to join in with that, I'm really, really sorry. Um, I think it was a really popular thing and Claudia did it in a really good way. And we are going to be doing a Zoom event again. So Claudia and I will get together and film um, a sort of dual podcast on Zoom and then publish it on our channels. Uh, we haven't found a time for that yet, um, but we will. We will. As soon as we do, I'll let you know. Uh, and that is a dodgy bag mail. Uh, I did draw some winners for my last make-along, which was the Cozy Winter Blanket make-along. Uh, one of those people have already got their prize, but I'm still waiting to hear from the other person. So if you joined in and your name is Chicken Petal Crochet, Louise Preston. Please get in touch with me and let me know your address and I will send you your prize. Okay, we're not gonna do any uh, patterns on my radar this time, because like I say, I am not, uh, not organized enough for that. Oh, but I will show you what I've got in my hand here. Uh, I bought this possibly at the last East Anglia Yarn Festival in 2023, I can't remember. It's by Labels by Katie. And I bought these specifically to put on my dodgy bags this year. 
perfectly imperfect little sewing labels. I need to do sewing labels for dodgy bags, don't I? That's what I should do. So you can sew them into the seam of your dodgy bags and everyone knows that you are perfectly happy with your imperfections, especially when it comes to sewing bags. Okay, I think that concludes the nonsense that has been today's podcast. I apologise if it felt a little bit all over the place and a little bit just haphazard, uh, but hopefully it'll come together as something quite interesting and you might pick up something um, inspiring along the way, just to say um, for the very last bit and finally, the last bit of the podcast is to say uh, thank you very much for all your lovely comments on the East Anglia Yarn Festival vlog and my making vlog before that. I always love reading your comments and um, that was no exception. I'm still working my way through them, but thank you for the love on it. I, I love how much you all love the yarn show vlogs and uh, wouldn't it be marvellous to just go to all the yarn shows and just film them? Oh, I'd very quickly run out of money when I go bankrupt. But yeah, thank you so much. You're always so lovely and so enthusiastic and encouraging and I really, really, really appreciate it and I feel feel so very, very lucky. Uh, so thank you for that. And don't forget that I am every day this month in, in April posting a vlog over on my other channel, which is This Little Wonderful Life, all about daily lifestyle, sometimes making, sometimes not making, walking, working, stuff. Um, so if you fancy that kind of thing, uh, hop over there. And I think that's it. I will see you next time uh, at the beginning of May. Probably before then as well, with a little making vlog if I can squeeze that in. And until then, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye. <laughs>